Hello everybody, this is Glenn Tompkins at VectorVest, and this is an update video just for you and what you need to do about it. So yesterday, Patrick did a beautiful video explaining what's going on deeply behind the scenes on GameStop, especially talking about the gamma squeeze on it. We all know that it's all part of a short squeeze and a lot of people stand to make a lot of money, but a lot of people stand to make uh, a big loss as well. So if you want to see this update and this is for you, you sit right there. Good morning, everybody. My name is Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor here at VectorVest. Always our pleasure to bring these videos on what's hot, what's rocking in the market right now so that you can stay updated on knowing what to do or what not to do. Before we get started, we always like to say if you are a subscriber to the channel, thank you for supporting VV Nation. But if you're just passing by, you see the video, you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. Uh, and always remember to hit the bell icon so that you can be updated to all of the new content that comes out. Folks, we invite you to share this content across your social circles. You may be letting someone else know about what we're doing over here at VectorVest. And most of all, if you like the content, make sure you smash that like button. All right, let's get down and dirty to what's going on. As I mentioned, uh, Patrick did a great job of talking what's going on behind the scenes on GameStop. And there's a lot of people wanting to push the stock's price down because there's an, an ornament amount of short stocks, short sellers, on the stock outside of the range on where it should be. Well, these short sellers are trying to push the stock's price down, possibly to put GameStop out of business. But I got a little story for you in regards to what they're doing to counteract that as well. So with all of that, a lot of people have taken a big hit owning the stock. A lot of people have pushed it down. A lot of stuff going on, whether you agree with it or not, whether it's legal or not, there's a lot of stuff that's going on behind the scenes to try to, to, try to keep the price low. But we've got the real uh, retail investors that are out there with Wall Street bets, with Reddit, uh, that are out there pushing the stock's price higher. Why? Because there's a high demand for this short squeeze. And what's going to happen is, as Patrick explained yesterday, those short sellers are going to have to cover their shorts. And they have to cover their shorts, buy the stock back or buy the option back at a much higher price, then keeping that price running higher and higher. Theoretically, this stock really could go to the moon. Now, is that going to happen? Don't know. We are in uncharted territory as far as this type of thing goes on. I don't think anything has been this publicized on this level on any stock. We've seen stocks that have been short squeezed before. How about we saw Jai ships way back in the day, nah, not way back, a couple of years ago, go up way high before they ended up getting bought. How about the scenario with Enron when it got uh, the same kind of scenario overshorting. So this is, to this point, having this many people backing the stock to push the stock's price higher, the demand is really high. The supply, though, on the other hand, as long as the short sellers are still selling it, they're taking up all of the shares that people can buy. Well, we'll watch that. As they cover those shorts, there's a lot of people still sitting out there going, yo, um, I, I want to get in on this. Now, with that perspective, though, understand that this is a movement. Uh, in this case, the fundamentals be damned. It's got nothing really to do with the fundamentals. It's about uh, the, the retail investor going after the hedge funds. And in this case, you know, maybe they're going put to the, put it to the man. All right. Maybe they're going to put it to the man. All right. As we go along, as you like the content, if you like the content, don't forget to um, comment down below. Let me know if you hold GME. Let me know if you're making money in GME. Let me know if you've lost money in GME. Nonetheless, there we have the people who are called the diamond hands that are holding it no matter what, pushing that stock's price higher. Um, I've heard stories. People have bought the stock at 300, wrote it down to 40, and they're still holding it right now. If you can't if you don't have the intestinal fortitude to do that, then this may not be the arena that you want to play in. But 
If you know, you feel deep down in your bones and in your heart that this stock's price is going to rocket to the moon, then by all means, have at it, all right? So, you know me, I always like to have a story behind what I'm talking about. So let's go talk about some of what's going on. Also, behind the gamma squeeze, uh, the short squeeze, let's talk about what um, GameStop is doing on their own as well. So this was a story that came out yesterday. Um, shares are climbing on Monday thanks to big news from Ryan Cohen, who is the founder of Chewy. And it turns out the, the activist investor will be spearheading a turnaround story and Reddit is paying close attention. Today, GameStop announced that the board of directors has formed a strategic planning and allocate, capital allocation program. Underneath all of that, what does it say? The committee will be responsible for identifying initiatives that can further accelerate the company's transformation. Ta-da! You know, a lot of companies using another keyword or another uh, buzzword, pivot. Being able to change direction and what they're doing to continue to make money, especially in a pandemic world that we're in right now. GameStop is trying to do that. So look at the squeeze, look at all of that information, but GameStop is stepping up to the plate to saying, listen, we are a viable company. We want to show people that we are a viable company and that we're going to do what we need to do. So I like this story. Most importantly for investors, Cohen is at the head of this new committee. The Chewy founder became an activist in investor, then ultimately a board member. His latest committee appointment reflects the interest among retail investors in seeing Cohen save the day. Investors should also note that Cohen is joined uh, on the committee by Alan Atal and Kurt Wolf. Atal previously served as the chief financial officer at Chewy. So a lot of Chewy influence. We all know that Chewy is a success story. A lot of Chewy influence coming into GameStop to turn it around. That could also be more fuel to push this to the moon. All right, so that was the story yesterday. Now, we're gonna go take a look at what's going on today. Now, I did a couple of things. After Patrick's story, I wanted to see what was going on with the stock pre-market. So looking at the eight o'clock hour in the VectorVest software, I saw that the stock's price closed at 194.50 yesterday. At the first uh, tick at 8 a.m. pre-market in our software, the stock's price jumped up to $214. So I drew a line that represented the gap. Notice that this line that I drew at about 215, all right, 214 thereabouts, 215, served as a beautiful level of support throughout the pre-market morning. That's cool. It did not fade the gap from that eight o'clock hour. That's also a bullish positive sign. Look at the volume as we get later, closer to the market open. The volume started picking up. We have stochastics on here, that level of 2080 to show when the stock is considered to be overbought and oversold, and a vector vest indicator called RT that tells us when the stock is in an uptrend or not. Let's zoom into right now. The market drop, uh, the stock dropped this morning. I've got moving averages of a three and an eight, especially for trading. All right, look at that jump up. The third minute of the market open. I'm on intraday one minute bars. The third minute of the market open, and look at the stock's price still running. Now, every time the stock gets to about overbought or oversold, you see the big jumps back and forth. Remember, I said that. It's tough to play in this arena if you don't have the intestinal fortitude to look at this kind of a graph. So I'm keeping that in mind. Now since, and it's sitting at about 11 o'clock this morning, the stock's price has pulled off to the high, but sitting at a high of $244 since it closed yesterday at 194.50. Man, oh man. So it pulled back a little bit, but if you're holding it, leave it be. So now, that was the pre-market, that is as of what's going on right now as I do this video. Let's put this on a three-month graph. What is the stock doing? Now, something else I really like about the stock. You know when this first came out, there was the, the buzz about it. The stock erratically jumped up, pulled back, whole nine yards. Look at the move now. It's a lot more of a steady move in the stock. Volatility is relatively low in this move. Can't nobody, no broker say that, well, we've got to shut the stock down because of the high volatility. That does not come into play right now. And as the stock's price is moving, that was that level of uh, 
uh, resistance that I drew uh, from this morning, or actually support, it's trading higher than that right now. The three and the eight are in place. The volume is pretty steady. The stock right now is sitting in a level of being overbought. What could happen? A little bit of a pullback. Now, wait a minute. If you're the longer term diamond hand investor, this doesn't appeal to you at all. Why? Because no matter what, you're holding the stock. This analysis that I'm doing right now is more so for the people who are trading the stock to make an opportunity for the uh, stock's price to move up. The 3 and the 8 look good. The volume looks good. The stock is currently sitting in a level of being overbought. Just keep that in mind. But if you're long term, you're shooting for the moon. Well, this most recent high sitting at 483. Man, this stock has got some run, some room to go. I like the news behind it. I like the graph from a technical standpoint, and that's where I stand right now. So this was just a follow-up from, uh, again, Patrick's wonderful analysis. This is just to see some follow-through. This is a little bit of a lunch tidbit of information. So with that, folks, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment down below. If you like the content, like it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. But folks, we're here for you. We want to keep you on top of what's rocking and rolling and help you to make the right decisions. So until the next time, see ya.